Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. On today's video, we're going to talk about the basic types of Elixir. And I have to be honest here, this is probably going to be a very boring video, so I'm gonna move fast. So, open up your terminal, you're gonna type IEX, which is the interactive Elixir that we were running on the previous video. So, the first type that we have on Elixir are integers. They're just regular numbers. And one nice synthetic sugar that we can add to integers is if you're dealing with very large numbers, like 1 million, it's hard to read sometimes. So you could add an underscore between your uh, digits of the integer and it's going to behave in the same way. So if you are doing large uh, mathematical operations on large numbers, feel free to add the underscore between the zeros and the digits. On Elixir, we also have floats. And one important thing to keep in mind is that when you're doing math operations on integers, you're always going to get an integer back, but that is not the case for the division. So if I do a division like this one, I am not going to get an integer back. I'm going to get a float back. So you need to be aware of this weird behavior. And if you want uh, an integer as a result of the division instead of a float, you can use the div function. So you can call div with these two numbers and you're going to get an integer back. Okay. Another data structure, I mean, basic type that we have on Elixir are strings and they behave like you would expect. And to concatenate strings, you can use this weird operator here like this. Or you can do a string interpolation. And to do that, I'm going to start using variables. So I have a name here which is Daniel. And if you guys remember, uh, Elixir is a dynamic language, so we don't need to say that name is a Boolean or an integer or a string. We just say name equals Daniel. So I'm going to create another variable called last name. Last name is going to be my complicated name, which is German, by the way, Daniel Beckles. And I can do a string interpolation like this. You're going to use the hashtag curly braces and then your variable. So we have here name. I'm going to add the space in between and then my second variable, which is last name. Nice. And be aware that to use strings, you need to use double quotes. Single quotes in Elixir is a whole different thing that you don't want to mess around with right now. So use double quotes. Another very important uh, type that we have on Elixir and is similar to strings are atoms. The syntax for atoms is a column and then the name of your atom. And if you want to add a space in the middle of your atom, you can't do it like this. You need to use this weird syntax with uh, double quotes, yep. But if you want to add a space uh, in between your atom name, I actually recommend you to use an underscore instead of a space because to be quite honest here, I don't see anybody <laughs> using this weird uh, syntax here. So if you want to add your full name, you can do like this, your first name, underscore, last name. This is a more a clean way of creating an atom. And okay, but what exactly is an atom? It is a named constant and it is similar to Ruby symbols. But if you're coming from another language like JavaScript, like me, you might not un fully understand the benefits of using an atom instead of a string. Because I mean, the atom is similar to a string. Uh, in practical terms. So when should I use one or the other? So you should use atoms 
if you plan to use a string like more than once, if you plan to reuse that uh, string on multiple places, then you should use an atom. So as an example, I'm going to open up my project that is using Elixir, stackschool.dev. Once you bootstrap a new Phoenix application, you're going to get a bunch of configuration files, right? And I'm going to have to pass the name of my project to all of those configuration files. So do you think it makes sense to use a string for my project name or an atom? If I search for column and then tech school, you're going to see that I have 38 results. I'm using the tech school name in 38 different places. So for this use case, it is much more memory efficient to use an atom instead of a string. Because if I, if I were using a string, I would be manually creating a new string on every single one of these instances. I would create the tech school string 38 times. So yeah, it's more memory efficient to use an atom if you plan to use uh, this name more than once. Okay, let me go back to the terminal. Another type that we have on Elixir is Booleans. We have true and we have false. And then we also have uh, to represent an empty value on Elixir. We do not have the new type. We have the new type, which is yeah similar to Ruby, but for me that's coming from JavaScript. It is a little bit weird, I'm not going to lie, but you get used to it. And one, another caveat that I need to mention for true, false, and new is that under the hood, they are actually atoms. So if you do something like this, true equal equals, and then the atom true, or false equal equals, colon false and then i'm gonna do the same for the new under the hood they are just atoms uh, but for your convenience since you're gonna use these three values all over the place you can type true false and new without the column and just keep this in mind because uh, a couple of times i have used the function is atom trying to detect if the variable is an atom, but then I would get a boolean, and then the return of is atom true, and then is atom false, and is atom new, is true because it is an atom. So it, it's important to have this in mind before working with them. All right, and now to finish this class, we also have the short circuit operators in Elixir. We have the OR, AND, and then this exclamation mark, which is the negation of the current value that you have. And to use these operators, you need to know what is a true C value and what is a false C value. The only false C values on Elixir are false and new. Everything else is considered a true C value. So, if I do something like this, let me see, new or false, or I'm going to add a string here. Daniel, what the hell is going on with my keyboard? Okay. The result here is Daniel because the or operator is going to get the last truthy value. And then the last truthy value here is the string, Daniel. New is falsy. False is another falsy operator. And then Daniel is truthy. And the same would be true if I were using an atom, for example. If I were using a integer or a float, I don't know. You're going to get the last truthy value. And the same goes for the AND operator. If I do something like true and AND 9.0 and AND false, uh, when you when you're using the AND operator, if any of the values are false, you're gonna get a false back. So, if there's any falsy values here, you're gonna get a false. The other falsy value is new. So we we also have 
here we have a new because that's uh, the first falsy value that we found on this operation. But if all the values here were truthy, like this one, you're going to get the last truthy operator. And that's pretty much it for this class. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.